Hey guys, it's Greg. Today I'll be making my full review of the 2022 Python for Machine Learning and Data Science Masterclass by Jose Portilla on Udemy. Man, that is a, quite the mouthful. So you'll see right away here, $40 Canadian, and that's even on sale. Please do not spend this on, not on sale. $160 Canadian is just a tremendous amount for, for any sort of content. Um, and you do get a nice certificate associated with this. But even then, I would not recommend that price. This one is a little bit more realistic. Although even then, you have to really consider before you want to spend that. Because again, these, these Coursera courses are always free. Uh, and you could just audit the material and learn about it there. Uh, and only if you want to pay for the certificate uh, or maybe Coursera Plus, then you have to pay. Here, even to get the content itself, you're, you're going to have to pay this $40. Uh, and so that's that's quite a bit. Um, anyways, I know that many of you really, really like this course. I've heard from many of you over the last couple of years or so uh, and strongly recommend this. Um, I do agree. I think it's quite nice. I haven't taken most of it. I have taken a little bit to understand the kind of lecturer he is. Uh, and today I'll be making a full review on uh, the content um, and each individual piece of the course itself. Okay, so course overview, you will learn how to use data science and machine learning with Python. Uh, for those of you that know me, I'm actually not wearing my Python hat today. Uh, but I very, very strongly recommend Python, you know, pretty much all the time. The other common choices of R or Julia, actually Julia is a lot less common, it's, it's growing a little bit. Um, R is still pretty common. I strongly recommend Python. If you're going to do any sort of machine learning, it's just going to take you a lot further and be applicable for a lot more positions. Uh, you'll create data pipeline workflows to analyze, visualize, and gain insights from data. That's pretty expected. Uh, build a portfolio of projects and be able to analyze your own data sets and gain insights through data science. Okay, so all of this is, uh, is, is relatively expected and that's totally fine. So show details and curriculum. Let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to skip over that because we've already looked at most of that. Whoa, that's actually a lot, but that's fine. I'm going to skip that. Okay, so 26 sections, 231 lectures, 44 hours total length. That's a long time uh, for really anyone that's um, to get through 44 hours and really understand that. Uh, oftentimes you'll be watching things multiple times, stopping it here and there to do your own thing. Uh, I hope I also encourage you uh, to stop where you are sometimes and just go off and do extra things by yourself or try to recall it from memory. Uh, so this is going to take a lot more than 44 hours. Um, and even then, 44 hours of work is a long time. But uh, that's good. You know, you, you want to pay for a lot of material. If you are spending $40 Canadian, uh, you better get a fair amount of content. And you do. Okay, so a nice, uh, nice welcome. Uh, they're setting up Anaconda. I personally do, uh, rarely use Anaconda. I usually do other Python things um, so that I don't use Anaconda. I found I just have some problems with it, but uh, it definitely works and it's extremely popular. Uh, optional Python crash course. So if you do need a little bit of Python practice, then you can go in, uh, go in and do that. Uh, machine learning pathway overview. Okay, so just talk about the different pieces. Uh, 10 minutes, he's gonna explain the pathway not too much actual content in there. Uh, the famous libraries that I always recommend, and I completely agree with these choices, uh, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and Seaborn. You can see here by far, uh, Pandas has the most amount of content. Uh, I'm actually a little bit surprised that you had spent only 53 minutes on NumPy, yet six and a half hours on Pandas. Uh, I can see why maybe Pandas does have a little bit more I'm not going to look at all of these individual uh, pieces, but uh, this all makes sense to me of why it might take a little bit of time. Pandas has a lot to it, all there. NumPy also has a lot to it, and I may have, I would have probably put in a little bit more effort into the NumPy um, to maybe balance those out a bit, but that's fine. Uh, Matplotlib, yeah, you really don't need to spend too much time on this. And honestly, I, I am, again, a bit surprised that you would have uh, twice as much content for matplotlib than you do you do numpy numpy is pretty complex and there, there's some important pieces uh seaborn again yeah i'm not surprised that this is uh this is has two and a half hours worth there's a lot of different graphs in seaborn a lot of different things you can do uh most of it's relatively easy but it gets a little bit weird sometimes 
And yeah, let's uh, let's move on. So data analysis and visualization capstone project. So this is actually a really nice time for a project. They go through after setting up your environment, Python, common Python libraries. Uh, you're able to do <clears throat> a very, very common analysis and visualization. And so they have a, a bit of a project there. That makes a lot of sense to me. Okay, uh, machine learning concepts overview. So again, uh, some some very common uh, introduction to machine learning type things. Why do we need machine learning? What types of problems does it solve? Uh, the types of machine learning algorithms. So not too much about the the mathematical uh, operations within them, uh, but a, a fair amount of saying like what different options there are and why you might need multiple. Uh, companion book introduction to statistical learning. So this uh, this is a book in R. Um, but you can you can skip the R pieces, and that's probably exactly what he's doing there. Uh, okay, linear regression. Yes, think. Uh, very happy they have five hours worth uh, of of linear regression because all this stuff is super important. Uh, ordinary least squares, cost functions, gradient descent, uh, Python examples, doing it through scikit-learn, evaluating the models with train test split, um, residual plots. All of this stuff is really really important stuff. So make sure you spend uh, a lot of time on all of these pieces. This is awesome. And uh, I can see why people recommend this so strongly because once you get here and do all this stuff, um, yeah, the, even he has regularization in here too, up to elastic knit, which is really wonderful. Uh, there's even some pieces here that I, uh, I, I would love to kind of remind myself a little bit on. Um, like how to do this, how to do elastic net properly in scikit-learn. Uh, this stuff is a little bit confusing, and this is just wonderful. So yeah, I, I can definitely see why people strongly recommend that. Make sure that you Im embed all of this knowledge as much as you can in your head, uh, and that's going to take you a long way. Uh, and so after after you've done this linear regression piece, which is really a lot more than linear regression, it's all about training models from a machine learning point of view. Um, and a little bit from a statistics uh, statistician point of view as well. That's that's quite wonderful. Uh, feature engineering, so dealing with uh, basically uh, random problems that might come up. Uh, I would be. I feel like they may have covered some of this in the pandas pieces already. Um, if not, it's just some extra pandas options, and those are quite nice. Uh, or num or numpy as well. And some sometimes I can learn. Uh, cross-validation, grid search, and the linear regression project. So, yep, this could fit very well into the linear regression section. Honestly, kind of all of these pieces uh, are, more, are more so just in like a, an introduction to machine learning piece. Uh, but yeah, either way, the content is just wonderful. Uh, logistic regression, so wonderful. They spend two and a half hours on that from linear to logistic or from linear to non-linear. Well, Sort of. <laughs> They'll talk about those pieces of why it's um, kind of linear, why it's kind of not linear. Um, and, and it's, it, yeah, this is just awesome. Confusion matrix, precision recall F1, rock curves. Um, so all about classification. They could have also put this in just a, a classification uh, tag as well. Really wonderful. So uh, they set you up extremely well to learn all of this properly. Linear regression, regression, uh, logistic regression for classification, all the classification pieces, and now here they have a bunch of models in a row uh, that have that can pretty much all the time do uh, regression or classification for K and N. You know, you'd take an average of the neighbors for classification. You could take, say, like a, a majority vote. Quite wonderful. Support vector machines. I, I don't actually feel a need to go into these individual pieces. By the way, pretty much it's going to be intuition, coding, and then support vector machines. Intuition, a lot of intuition for uh, SVMs because they're confusing. Don't blame yourself if you get stuck in this 20 minute piece. This it, It's pretty confusing. Um, but if you can really master this, then you're gonna be a very strong data scientist. This, the, the, <laughs> this is much more advanced than most people get, but wonderful. So yeah, um, support vector machines, tree-based methods, uh, random forest and boosting methods, which are really also uh, tree-based methods. Uh, some project on supervised learning, which makes sense. All of these methods are, are really for super supervised learning. Uh, we have naive Bayes and a little bit of natural language processing, also supervised learning. I don't know why they really put 
supervised learning in brackets there because all of this stuff you could you could put that supervised learning in brackets there uh, but i guess he's doing it because that's basically like the capstone the the end of the uh, supervised learning sections that they have there uh, unsupervised learning so just a, a lecture there of what that is they go into clustering via k-means and hierarchical and db scan pretty standard but it's what you should do Principal component analysis, and I don't even remember what manifold learning is, so I could use a, a refresher on whatever that means. <laughs> Man, this is in-depth. Wonderful. Model deployment. And they throw in an hour there to actually deploy some of these models, which is phenomenal. So it ends there. Uh, what does that mean? It doesn't cover deep learning. So all of this stuff, it sets you up really, really well for uh, their deep learning course. I think they have a deep learning course. I'm forgetting right now. I haven't looked in a bit. Um, I think they do, and I'll probably make a review of that after. This by itself, uh, absolutely phenomenal. You know, just from, I assume they, they require you have a little bit of Python knowledge, or they suggest that you do, because they have an optional Python crash course. But if you have a little bit of programming experience, you can go through this step by step and just phenomenally understand both the mathematical details to the point that you need uh, and definitely the coding solutions. You will be a significantly stronger uh, programmer after this. Um, and yeah, really well into the machine learning methods. I'm very happy with all of the methods that they cover there and into the unsupervised learning as well. No reinforcement learning, which is expected. It's not really necessary, although it is cool. You can, you can take a separate course for that. Uh, no deep learning, but this sets you up extremely well for the deep learning course as well. So would I recommend this? Yes, I would. Um, it is $40 Canadian on sale. And so you have to really think if, if, you, if you want to spend the money for that. If you do, uh, this will be phenomenal and I think that is a, a small amount of money considering the amount of material and the certificate that you get out of this. Um, so those are my thoughts. Uh, write a comment down below if you have some thoughts or some questions and I can try and help answer that. And yeah, have a great day guys. I, I hope that was helpful and I'll see you later.